Hi, um, let's talk about mapping mapping today, what people used to call mapping grade or resource grade. Um, this is not going to be a discussion about the controversy of who or should, who should or should not be doing certain types of field observations. You know, cadastral surveying is by most laws, uh, you know, purely in the hands of licensed surveyors. Mapping, well, rather than get into that controversy, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what people are capable of doing with different equipment, what resources people have available, and what you might want to kind of put into your utility belt as another possible line of business for your surveying business. So people think about mapping units. Mapping grade unit and a survey grade unit have a, have a heck of a lot in common. The most common format you're going to see for a mapping unit is an all-in-one data logger and receiver built into one, the handheld. Now this, you know, this is a pretty sophisticated one. It's got a built-in receiver, an operating system that can run any software. You can actually run survey software on one of these. It's the same as uh, operating system as a lot of your, your data collectors. So you got the mapping grade unit, and what distinguishes it as a mapping grade often is just the software that people are using. The software in a lot of ways isn't different than your survey software. They collect in a different mode, we'll call it. And the way they collect it, you know, in their GIS style of, of themes is one thing, but if, if equipment is capable of doing a meter, subfoot, decimeter, or even centimeter, it really doesn't matter what software you're using to collect it or what format you store it out as, it's still collecting that position. So on its own, this unit here, this is basically your meter unit. You can use the uh, FAA WAS satellites as an augmentation, beacons, Coast Guard beacons. Or in this case, I Bluetooth to a cell phone and I'm tying into a real-time network. So this single frequency unit, just on its own, is getting me a decimeter. But it doesn't stop there. You can add other things to it. Uh, actually, sometimes these don't work very well in your pocket, but um, people add things to them. External antenna. You might see up on a backpack on a pole or on a, on a, on a real pole, a real one. Up on there, and that improves your sky a lot. Some of the uh, building antennas on some of these are rivaling the, uh, the rover antennas. But the thing is, most line mappers have this hanging down around the way. And you're blocking the path. You know, you're a multi-path and you're blocking satellites. Where you can really take this off is to Bluetooth this thing to a dual frequency unit and you start getting your centimeter. Anyhow, there's a lot of cool options out there. Uh, the next segment I'm going to go into office and show you what they mean by mapping mode. Okay, what I was trying to tell you outside there before the trucks pulled up was that the, uh, you know, the little handheld GPS units may have an excellent antenna, but if you're uh, holding it around your waist, you know, to work on the on the uh, little inputs, uh, that you're kind of blocking signal and you know, like my bolt spot is a good source of multi-path, but so <clears throat> what I've done here in the comfort of the air-conditioned truck is I'm sitting in here working on the unit. I'm going to configure it and set up to go out and shoot some uh, some items outside here. So the other thing I've done is I have Bluetoothed over to the dual frequency unit sitting out there in the heat while I'm in in the nice cool truck here and I've hooked it up to the laptop so I can show you what uh, uh, what the menus look like the idea of the mapping grade unit is it's collected in a different mode than the survey with this setup I've got here we are getting centimeter and we're getting uh, good vertical as well but we're just going to collect it in a different file type to be input into an inventory. I, I'm not going to use the term GIS. I'm going to call it asset inventory. Uh, some of the GIS data collection software that have their own little RTK engines, those are a little bit subpar sometimes. I think you can find out what, uh, what works uh, good or does not. So I'll switch over to the screen here.